Hi, everyone. I'm James Cadella, a product manager in Azure Cosmos DB. Today, we're going to be talking about how to build generative AI apps using your data stored in Cosmos DB. So uh, as you probably already know, Cosmos DB is a set of highly scalable and AI-ready databases. We have Azure Cosmos DB NoSQL that features high elasticity and instant auto scale, very low latency, and mission-critical reliability. We're building vector search into the database, and it's going to be launched in preview in May. Today, in Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB, uh, which is our dedicated or uh, provisioned uh, compute and storage offering, you're able to store your data and vectors together today using uh, built-in vector indexes like IVF and HNSW. I'll talk a little bit about these both today. First, let's talk about some of generative AI use cases that we're seeing customers implement with Cosmos DB. Uh, first, they're using Cosmos DB for MongoDB as a vector database, right? Storing vectors and data together for consistency and leveraging the flexible, schemaless, uh, NoSQL uh, uh, orientation of the documents stored in Cosmos DB. We're also seeing a lot of customers do RAG, retrieval augmented generation, trying to find the most relevant data in the database and bring it to ground their large language models to their specific scenarios. We have thousands of customers also using Cosmos DB to manage their chat histories. So logging the user prompts or questions and the responses from the large language model. And this allows you uh, to uh, leverage it in multiple scenarios like conversational context. The chatbot remembers what was talked about in the last se session or last day or last week. Uh, you're also able to mine these for user insights, identify ways to improve your user experience, uh, leverage the data for fine tuning and optimization or meta prompt engineering of your large language models. And also it's important to keep these for auditing purposes. You know, you have your uh, AI models interacting with uh, humans. You may want to make sure that, um, that the model is behaving as you expect. Finally, we see a lot of customers also doing what's known as semantic caching. And this is leveraging vector search on your historical large language model responses. And this is, uh, this is a really great feature that allows you to save calls to your large language model. And uh, therefore, you're reducing latency and saving LLM costs because um, you're doing vector search to find the most relevant previously generated responses and leveraging those. Uh, so I mentioned that today we have uh, built-in vector search into Cosmos DB for MongoDB. And in May at the Build Conference, we're going to announce Cosmos DB NoSQL Vector Indexing and Search. And this is going to be powered by DiskANN, which is a suite of very powerful uh, indexing algorithms that have been developed at Microsoft Research that utilizes both an in-memory index and an on-disk index for efficient querying. This algorithm is made for Cosmos DB infrastructure and allows you to perform vector search at incredible scale and incredible performance. Below, I show an example of how you would execute vector search in Cosmos DB NoSQL query, uh, query and it's very simple. Um, you just write a standard query, and there we introduce a new system function called vector distance, where you can specify uh, the property to point at that contains your vector embedding in your document, and the query vector that you want to compare against. Um, really simple, uh, really easy to use, and we'll be announcing this uh, at Build and showing some demos uh, at the end of May. Now, that's enough slides. Let's get into a demo. Uh, so I'm going to walk through a Jupyter Notebook where we're building a RAG pattern application in Python, and we're going to leverage Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB. OK, great. So let's take a look at this Jupyter Notebook where we're going to build a RAG pattern application using Python, Langchain, and Gradio to have a really nice interface uh, up and running very quickly for my chatbot. So we're going to we're going to be using the Movie Lens dataset, um, which contains some descriptive information about lots of different movies, and we'll build we will be building a chatbot that will uh, help us uh, ask questions and learn about uh, different movies and different characteristics of movies. So in this notebook, uh, we'll start off by installing the necessary packages uh, that I'll be using through this demo. Uh, so I've already uh, gone ahead and done that, so I've commented those out. Um, and oh, I forgot to mention that uh, this notebook will be available uh, in some links that I'll share at, at the end of the demo. So uh, don't worry if I'm running through this very quickly or there's some blocks of code that look uh, really, um, really verbose, uh, you'll be able to access this and all the data uh, afterwards. Great. So uh, I'll import the packages that I'm using. And again, uh, really uh, using a lot of Langchain, Gradio for the interface, and also PyMongo to access my Cosmos DB for MongoDB resource. Uh, so we'll let that load up there. And once all my packages are finished loading, it's a little bit slow, but that's OK. I'm running locally. Um, so once my packages have finished loading, then I'll start loading my environment variables. Right. So uh, I have an environment file 
that contains all my connection info for my Cosmos DB for MongoDB resource, as well as all my connection info and deployment info for my OpenAI embeddings model and my OpenAI completions model. This is my GPT uh, model that I'll be using for my chatbot. Then I'll go ahead and connect to my um, Cosmos DB resources. So we'll go ahead and execute that one. We'll go ahead and execute this cell. And I, now I have some shortcuts to my Cosmos DB uh, collections and databases. Uh, I will instantiate a uh, connection to my uh, embeddings model here, and we'll give it a test, right? I will pass this test string into my Azure OpenAI embeddings model, and I'll get back a uh, text three large uh, embedding. So this is a um, you know vector embedding that was created using the newest uh, OpenAI model that was recently deployed on Azure. So uh, not uh, really that useful just to look at, but kind of cool to see. Uh, next, I will set up a vector search pipeline with Langchain, right? So I'm basically connecting to my uh, Cosmos DB for MongoDB resource and providing some connection string details and some information about uh, what vector properties to use, et cetera. So I'll go ahead and set that up. And optionally here, if I haven't already uploaded my data and created a vector index to allow me to do vector similarity search, I can go ahead and define an index or create an index here. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done this, so I'm going to skip this step. Uh, and now, you know, I have my connection set up to my uh, Cosmos DB database with all my data and vectors already in there. I have my vector index defined. I did that previously. And now we'll do a test vector search. So I'll say, um, you know, I'm going to search for uh, movies and descriptions of movies that contain the uh, something semantically similar to Buzz Lightyear. And I'm going to ask for the top five results, and I'm giving it a similarity score threshold of 0.2 because I just want to see uh, what else is in the data set. So I'll go ahead and run that. And I can see five documents came back just as I requested. Uh, the And then these are the descriptions or overviews of movies. So it sounds like these first three are... Um, are Toy Story movies, which is cool. That's exactly right. And it looks like these last two uh, maybe aren't Toy Story movies, but uh, they're Pixar movies, right? They're, they're referring to Lightning McQueen, uh, who's a character in the Pixar uh, Cars series. Uh, so it's interesting that I was able to find, you know, Toy Story is the most semantically relevant, um, or uh, Toy Story movies are the most semantically relevant based on the descriptions. And these other Pixar movies are also somewhat relevant as well. So that's pretty cool to see and a good indication that my vector search is working properly. Uh, next, I'll start um, setting up my large language model pipeline using Langchain. So what we'll do is uh, we'll first set up a prompt. These are instructions that I want to give to my large language model on how to respond. And I'm going to be uh, preparing a Langchain chain or a sequential series of steps um, doing a couple things, right? So I'm going to set up uh, my vector store as my base for getting information about my movies. I'm going to set up a large language model connection to my completions model in Azure OpenAI. This is my GPT model that I've deployed. Then I'm going to set up this uh, built-in uh, Langchain uh, object called conversational retrieval chain. And this allows me to do cool stuff like um, uh, get data from a data store, Cosmos DB, feed it to a large language model in Azure OpenAI, and do things like semantic caching, leveraging previous responses instead of calling my large language model all the time and store conversational history in Cosmos DB. And this is going to help me do this uh, fairly quickly. So there's a lot of verbosity here. Uh, again, you can refer to this uh, in some of the GitHub links that I'll refer to uh, at the uh, end of this demo. Uh, so I'll go ahead and execute that. And then I'll load up my, um, my examples here. And what we'll do is we'll just clear everything, make sure it's nice and clean. And let's run a test, right? So I'm going to invoke my large language model through the chain, and I'm going to ask it a question. Tell me about movies with Buzz Lightyear. And uh, so this will execute the vector search and send it to my large language model. And it says, hey, there are three movies that feature Buzz Lightyear, Toy Story, Toy Story 2, and Toy Story 3. Now, notice that it took 3.35 seconds. Most of that time is spent because of uh, the GPT model taking time to generate completion. Now, uh, that question and the response have been stored in my semantic cache in Cosmos DB. Now, when I run the same question or a similar question again, I can see that the wait time is much shorter, not even 500 milliseconds, right? And this is because it doesn't need to execute the large language model call. It leverages the previously generated response stored in Cosmos DB, and all it does this is a simple vector search for retrieval. And I can save you know, almost three seconds off the clock. So really cool, really powerful, saves time and money. 
Now, so now that I have that simple demo set up, uh, let's go ahead and set up a cool UI um, with Gradio. So um, I have some Gradio uh, uh, commands uh, set up here, and I have uh, my simple interface set up. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this cell, and this will set up everything for me. And then I'll go launch a, a demo here, and I'll create a little local server. Um, and I can see in VS Code that I can see my Gradio interface. Uh, it doesn't particularly look that appealing in VS Code, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this link, and I'll bring over my web browser here. So here we go. I see my chatbot interface and my cool little web app, and I can say, Hello, tell me about movies that have Captain Kirk. And uh, so we'll run and do the vector search, get the relevant documents, and feed it to the large language model. And it tells me about these Star Trek movies with Captain Kirk. And I can even ask more detailed questions, like uh, what movie had whales in it? I think it was one of the Star Trek movies, right? And hey, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. And that's absolutely right. Um, so... Here's a really quick and easy way to get started with a, with a Python application using LaneChain, uh, Cosmos DB, and um, Gradio for your interface. Now, I promised you a couple resources at the end, so let's take a look at those. Cool. Yeah, so uh, a lot of resources uh, that you can take advantage of. Uh, we have uh, AKMS Quick Links, so you can go read more about Cosmos DB and LangChain, including the vector search capabilities. Uh, we have an article specifically on using semantic cache with Cosmos DB. And then we also have integrations with uh, Semantic Kernel, uh, which is a Microsoft-developed uh, LLM orchestrator. We have integrations with Azure OpenAI Studio for a low slash no-code environment to get started with a POC right away. And we also have solution accelerators in .NET and in Java to get you started. So go ahead and check out some of these resources, uh, and uh, this will be a great way to get started with a uh, demo and uh, get started using Cosmos DB for MongoDB's vector search capabilities. Thanks.